In the spotlight tonight, crazy Republican billionaire candidate for New York governor, Carl Palladino, finds himself in trouble after trying to apologize his way out of trouble. On Sunday, Rabbi Yehuda Levin showed his support for Palladino by inviting him to speak before a conservative religious audience at the Carlsberg Synagogue in Brooklyn. I just think my children and your children will be much better off and much more successful <clears throat> getting married and raising a family. And I don't want them to be brainwashed into thinking that homosexuality is an equally valid or successful option. It isn't. Many took issue with Palladino's surprising remarks, but none more than Palladino's openly gay nephew, Jeff Hannon, who works on his campaign staff. Since Palladino's comments became public, Jeff Hannon has not shown up for work. Not even after Palladino stepped back from his remarks, releasing a statement reading, I sincerely apologize for any comment that may have offended the gay and lesbian community or their family members. Any reference to branding an entire community based on a small representation of them is wrong. I am in support of civil agreements and equal rights for all citizens. If elected as your governor, I will stand and fight for all gay New Yorkers' rights. After reading the apology, Ra Rabbi Levin felt betrayed by the candidate he endorsed and immediately called Palladino's campaign manager. It was not a pleasant conversation, and I did not allow myself to be patronized. He had to do it because his gay nephew or his family told him so. He discovered now he has a gay nephew, Mazel Tov. We'll make a coming out party. What does that have to do with the religious people in the state of New York? I don't get it. Joining me now, Rabbi Yehuda Levin, who also serves as a spokesman for the Rabbinical Alliance of America. Also, Rabbi David Seth Kirshner from Temple Emanuel, a conservative synagogue in New Jersey. He serves as an officer on the New York Board of Rabbis. Thanks for joining us, Rabbis. Thank you, Lawrence. Rabbi Levin, uh, is it true that you actually wrote the statement that Carl Palladino gave at your synagogue? There were two, there, there were two synagogue visits. First was Carlsberg. That was the statement I wrote. It included much of the, um, many of the stands, but it wasn't the controversial one. That took place in Williamsburg at Kashau. And uh, for, for the last few days, everybody has been trying to find which mysterious stranger wrote the second one, which was even stronger. And what I said is, look, I'm willing to defend the second one, but it happens to be that I didn't write the second one. Uh, okay, and you. And but you I have no who? problem. No, I, I, I have ideas who, but I'm protecting the identity of okay. somebody who doesn't deserve to be, you know, bashed and harassed and his family. But it's very, very simple. There's no other word that's better than indoctrination or brainwashing for putting children in a classroom prison and forcing them to absorb uh, what the politically correct homosexualist person of sex education when their identi sexual identities are in flux according to our doctors until around the age of 20. In Massachusetts where they have gay marriage as the law of the state, Parents are forced to have their children attend. And there's a prominent case of somebody who tried to opt out and he's faced prison and harassment and charges and everything else. We are the victims. I haven't seen an Orthodox Jew beating up on a homosexual, calling them the kinds of names that I've been receiving, F you, pig, drop dead, die, just because I stand up for my religion. And I'm told that we're the violent ones so that we're encouraging the violence. We are you, the victims. You, you say you're standing up for your religion. Could you sure. clarify what is your religion in, uh, on the matter of homosexuality? What do you, what are, what are the religious teachings that you teach on the issue of homosexuality? Do, are you like some fundamentalist Christians who believe no. that all homosexuals are evil and no, will, no, it has will burn in do, hell no, forever? No, no, it has nothing to do with the person. It has to do with, with acts of homosexuality are forbidden. Just as we tell people underage, acts with underage people is forbidden. As a matter of fact, the homosexual community in England wants to lower the age of sexual consent to 14 so that an 80-year-old rich man could pick up a 14-year-old kid and the parents have nothing to say about it. This so is the, intrinsically the, the, ruled. So a person can be gay in, in, in your religious view. They simply must not in any way physically act on it and have gay sex. And That's, if they do have okay, gay sex, okay. what is your religious teaching about what then 
happens is, to well, them, either here well, or in the well, afterlife. I, again, the important thing is that it's a transgression like hundreds of other transgressions, but it is a severe transgression on the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. The Torah portion we read is all of sexual licentiousness, starting with adultery and incest. And the last three in this order are adultery, homosexuality, and bestiality. So we get an idea that biblically, Torah speaking, this is a very severe offense. That does doesn't mean that we don't have the greatest compassion on those who might have that particular drive, just like we have compassion on somebody who wants to do it with somebody else's wife. We have compassion, but we don't lower the standards for them. We don't certainly make something that is forbidden, permitted, and we don't elevate it to pride. Any bedroom behavior or misbehavior is not a source of pride. Intellect, holiness, accomplishments for society, not what you do with your reproductive organs. Rabbi uh, Kirshner, in, in scripture, as we've just heard, homosexuality is on the same list as adultery. Uh, does it belong on that same list? And is that the modern view in, 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 in your rabbinical view of this? In, in my rabbinical view, absolutely not. In my rabbinical view, the same text that we study on the holiday he speaks about, talks about later, loving our neighbors, we love ourselves. We read last week in synagogues around the world that we're all created in God's image. And someone's sexual orientation is not a choice. Being gay is not a choice. And homosexuality is the civil rights issue of our generation. And Jews have always been at the forefront of issues on civil rights. That's why Martin Luther King Jr. stood shoulder to shoulder with Abraham Joshua Heschel. That's why Goodman and Schwerner were down with Cheney in Mississippi in 64. They even died on these issues. And there are young boys and young girls who are killing themselves because of these issues of not feeling comfortable in their identity. Religion needs to be something that's a tool to help people cope with the world, not used as a weapon to beat people up. Just your sense, what, what is your sense of Jewish America? Uh, what percent see this as Rabbi Levin does, and, and what, what percent do you think see this the way you do? I'm glad you brought that up. You know, there are three major sects in Judaism. There's Reform, Conservative, and Orthodox. Reform conservative comprise more than two-thirds of Judaism, and those the, the majority of Reform and conservative Judaism believes in full equal rights for gay people in our community. They believe in civil unions. They believe in equality. And as they are in my congregation, we don't have a large constituency of openly gay people, but we have a full policy of embracing all people in God's image. Rabbi Levin, do you, like Carl, Carl Paladino, uh, I, I, have any gay relatives? Uh, n not that I know of, but I'm sure, I'm sure at some point we do. But the point is, uh, David's a very nice fellow, but David, this is cut and paste Judaism. When you take something as superficial as, when it says love thy neighbors, love yourself, and you try to somehow say that that kosher is homosexual activity or adultery, that's not only a lack of scholarship, it's just fooling people. Religion is not something you take a vote on. If you take a vote in popularity, so let's do it the right way. From Sinai until now, what was the overwhelming preponderance of his grandparents, great-grandparents, great-grandparents, and mine? All the Jews did not have any arguments about all the sexual behaviors, misbehaviors that are forbidden. Now we Rabbi want Levin, to have... Rabbi can I sure, keep sure. you in politics just for a sure, second? Sure, of don't course. Time. Is there anyone you've actually voted for on a New York ballot? Has there ever been anyone on a New York ballot in any office that agrees with you on this that you've that, had a that, chance to that, vote for? That, that is an excellent point, and the answer to that is as follows. Over the lit, what has been so attractive about Carl Palladino, and I made this point, is his positions that he took Sunday with us, I give the man the greatest credit to carry a baby to term. He didn't drown the mother, and he didn't kill the innocent baby, Teddy. He was great. He was one in a million. And I still believe so he's a devout prior person. prior to Palladino's brief moment no, in your son, no, there's never been anyone in New York politics you support? conservative and Republican candidates. And not so many years ago, you know, I ran for mayor of New York against Ed Koch. On the, I was the right to life candidate in 85. And guess what? Ed Koch says partial birth abortion is murder. So here you have... Even yeah, but Ed Koch is fine with all other forms of abortion. So you could never support true, him. True, absolutely there's no not. one who's ever been on a New no, York ballot I, I can think of who I just fits. I your requirements. Al D'Amato, what are you talking about? Al D'Amato was in favor of gay rights. What Excuse are you talking me, about? Excuse me, sir. Al D'Amato <laughs> wasn't until the last few months uh, when he lost and he was getting desperate. He, did you know when you endorsed Carl Palladino, did you know that he had sent and forwarded and enjoyed yes, let me, racist emails and pornographic emails, including one that involved a woman 
and a horse, and does that fall within acceptable sure, let me, let me respond conduct to under no, your absolutely. teachings? Saint Leviticus 18, Absol Rabbi Lindemann, absolutely, but let me, let, me explain, let me explain to you that, let me it's explain to you. It's hypocritical to, no, to argue I don't that think Leviticus you have to, 18 listen, no, listen, listen, would say I don't think that bestiality is forbidden. We read me, that on our holiest of days. I agree with you. I agree with you. And let right. me respond, please. Let me respond. Here's what we have. And this takes a little bit of putting on a thinking cap. On the one hand, we have Andrew Cuomo, who is going to pass legislation. So did, you, did you know about the bestiality? Of course I did. Okay. And I wasn't happy about You're it. You're okay with it. I'm not happy with it at all, no. But I knew that this is a man who fell short, like many, many people who view pornography. It's unfortunate. Shame on him. I discussed it with him. You just, did you discuss the bestiality one? I discussed what did he say about the that concept one? of pornography, and I said, now that you're going for higher offices, the chief executive, do you want to defend your daughter from obscenity in the libraries? It's time to up, to, to up the ante and, and to repent, to do something better. And he agreed with me. We were in the car just this Sunday. Now, here's the deal. The thing that Palladino is better is I'd rather have a person Try to get this. I'd rather have a person who does all kinds of bad things in his private life, but publicly in terms of the legislation he will sponsor will be a hypocrite, but will let my children go up. In a, and that's the answer. It's a million times more important. And by the way, a guy like that to carry the baby to term is one in a million. Everyone else, rich, wealthy, get rid of the evidence. Now, Rabbi, there's an honest defense for you. It's, he will back a hypocrite as long as the hypocrite in his private life is doing things that he will not support in his public life. No. At, least, at least in his proactively, public life, you're getting, you're getting half of what you want, right? A guy who's okay with you much, in his public much life. More proactively, what's more? Proactively, we're getting 100% what, what would your rabbinical teachings public. be about that? This would be my rabbinical teachings, Lawrence, that while this man is, I, I love him for being created in the image of God, he doesn't represent the flavor of Judaism for me and for most of the Jewish people in the world. For me, the most important thing in Judaism is the saving of a life, right? That's the most important thing. And when there are young people, and this month in What's particular, Tyler Clementi, Ask him his view on Tyler Clementi, who Ask from him Rutgers, his view on abortion, and five or six young that. people who commit suicide because they're uncomfortable with their sexuality, we have a responsibility in religion to help save lives. That's why I'm proud to be a Jew, and that's why and, I became and, a rabbi. And quickly, what is your position on abortion? My position on abortion is it's the right of every person to choose, just as our Torah teaches us. The Torah there are many opportunities where the Torah allows people, should they need the to way. have abortion, whether for health reasons, medical reasons, even financial reasons, emotional reasons, they are permitted to do so. It should come as no surprise to anyone watching that with two rabbis, we could go on for the rest of the hour, but we do have to move on. I thank you thank both you. rabbis you, for coming in tonight. I greatly appreciate your time tonight. Thank, thank you. you.